A uh, 62-year-old lady with uh, multiple comorbidities was referred to us for the fair uh, evaluation of the exact theology of obstructive jaundice as a standard protocol at our unit for the last 14 years. It's always EUS, SOS, ER, CP, uh, with a definitive diagnosis of what's going on and what's the cause of etiology uh, obstructive jaundice, uh, colitis diseases. So we are sitting in the duodenum. I'm trying to figure out what's going on, and you can see some lymph nodes in the porta there, a pericolidocal node, that's a portal vein in the view. And we are trying to evaluate uh, the bile duct here. So I'm seeing the pancreatic head here. A very small pancreatic duct is visualized. Uh, we are trying to get the bile duct in focus here. So micro movements are what is required in EUS once you are in the duodenum. So from the duodenal bulb, you make small adjustments on your up and down dial, a little bit of clockwise, anti-clockwise rotation of your hand or pronation or supination of your hand, left hand, uh, giving uh, some access to you to see what's going on. Now obviously uh, the lower bile duct is extremely small and compressed and therefore uh, we were not able to visualize it so well but uh, what I can see here a hypoechoic lesion here yes there is some hypoechoic lesion uh, uh, here yes and then uh, there is slightly dilated upper bile duct region here with some calcific spots here you can see here in the porta so this is right at the porta my scope is uh, in the anti-clockwise rotational movement all the way up trying to see the hilum so whenever you want to really see the hilum well you can see the IHB are dilated in the left lobe on radial scope you can see and therefore sometimes it's better to use a linear scope when you want to uh, evaluate uh, uh, the porta and here I'm seeing some mass in the porta very close to the pancreatic body. I'm trying to look at the lymph nodes. Uh, absolutely no lymph nodes. And now we are looking at the pancreatic head with the linear echoendoscope. You can see the bile duct. Uh, you can see the portal vein. You can see the pancreatic duct there. You can see the bile duct there on linear. So that rules out any head mass. So the best way to see the porta is from the stomach. And that's what I'm trying to do now. Uh, so we have come into the stomach. We do retroflexion kind of a movement with an up and down dial. I'm seeing the aorta. Uh, we see the left uh, uh, lobe of liver. And now here we are seeing the portal vein entering the hilum. And you can see a vague hypoechoic lesion there. And I could not see and appreciate the bile duct so well. But there is thickening of the bile duct wall for sure at the common hepatic duct level. Uh, with few adjustments, we were able to see that hypoechoic lesion which we saw earlier on radial. I'm bringing back into the position. Uh, and since this patient has severe other comorbidities, patient was exclusively sent for uh, accurate diagnosis and uh, tissue diagnosis as well as uh, definitive palliation uh, rather than any or exploratory uh, surgical procedure or resection attempts. So here you can see I'm positioning this lesion into uh, 5 to 7 o'clock position and I'm transgastric. I'm making an FNA. Uh, there is a potential argument, uh, I'm sure, amongst our colleagues that uh, there is always a chance of tumor cell seeding transgastrically and therefore, we do not advocate uh, EUSFNA uh, transgastric route of any pancreatobiliary lesion if you're planning a definitive resection with an intention of cure. So always we do this procedure primarily for tissue diagnosis, uh, for definitive palliation, and when we've ruled out uh, possibility of resection. So here you can see a periveterian diverticulum. Uh, we always prefer to use a cannula whenever I see a periveterian diverticulum. 
because the axis of the bile duct is deviated because of the divert and now we are climbing right into the right hepatic ductal system. Now, ideally you should have an MRCP, but we have uh, had some idea on EUS about the dilatation of the system and you can see here is almost bismuth type 3B structure uh, occluding the common hepatic duct. So, uh, you can also inject air and produce an air cholangiogram instead of injecting contrast at this stage and that will give you a rough idea. Now, uh, ever since we started doing bilateral hyalur stenting simultaneous deployment of two metal stents, uh, hyalur cholangio related cholestatic symptoms uh, uh, I think uh, has changed since then, uh, since our first uh, uh, the bilateral simultaneous stent placement we did in March 2010, uh, which I, I believe was the first case in this part of the country uh, or perhaps in the nation at that time according to the industry sources. Uh, we did brushing as you can see here even after doing an FNA because we want to have uh, adequate material. So, we are doing uh, brushing primarily because we do not have on-site cytopathologist. So, it is better to have EUSFNA and brushing both uh, to get a maximum amount of cellular material for a definitive diagnosis. So, once we have done brushing, uh, we will now go ahead with uh, balloon dilatation of the stricture. So, what we are planning to do here is uh, we will balloon dilate the stricture. We may use 4 millimeter, 6 millimeter or 8 millimeter biliary balloon and uh, we dilate it up to around 6 to 7 atm pressure uh, and then once the dilatation is through, uh, subsequent cannulation of the left ductal system will be achieved. So, dilatation is a very integral part of hyalur cholangiocarcinoma uh, di diagnosis as well as effective palliation. So, by the side of the guide wire, as you can see here, I am now planning to pass a guide wire into the left ductal system and you can see here that our hydrophilic wire has crossed in and entered the left ductal system and we will obtain a cholangiogram which confirms our presence in proper dilated left ductal system. Once that is achieved, uh, we will see whether we can easily pass subsequent catheters and accessories, but now two guide wires are in place and uh, we will try and uh, dilate the stricture in the left duct as well. The reason for this is we would like to place uh, two simultaneous deployed metal stent through the working channel of the scope. And you can see here my balloon has gone across the stricture into the dilate portion of the, of the left ductal system and then we will dilate gradually with a balloon. Uh, here we are using 6 mm balloon to dilate. You can see the balloon dilatation happening and immediately after dilatation the contrast starts draining from the left arc. Once both the guide wires are in place, both the tracks are dilated uh, with balloons, uh, then the time has come to load uh, a definitive uh, stent. So, here we are going ahead with the first self-expandable deployable uh, metal stent uncovered into the left ductal system because uh, we feel that, that the tortuous uh, track should go first and then now uh, we are going by the side of the first stent a second self-expandable stent delivery system uh, into the right ductal system. Uh, this is the challenge here when it crosses the stricture. So, you need uh, certain technical maneuvers to overcome this difficulties and now I want all of you to pay attention to stents simultaneously through the working channel of the scope. Uh, this stent delivery system is a six French delivery device uh, through a regular uh, ERCP scope. Now, you can see both the markers are moving. 
simultaneously on the fluoroscopy. So both the stents are being deployed uh, simultaneously. As you can see, both the markers are moving down and both the stents are expanding at the same time uh, across the hilar stricture. And this completes uh, a complete deployment of, of uh, both the stricture, uh, st stents right and the left ductal system. Uh, you see properly uh, deployed 8 centimeter uh, stents left in the bile duct above. 